Today, I am very excited because today I've seen the first Streamlit component for doing network analysis that really makes me excited to do it in Streamlit. Now, I've been building network analysis apps in Streamlit for the past three or so years. And every time that you wanna do it, you have to design something that's a little clunky, especially if you're gonna do it from scratch. Oftentimes, you're gonna probably use something like PyViz to do it. Now, there's a couple other Streamlit components out there that help you with network visualization, but in my opinion, they all don't have a lot of customization. They all fall a little short. They don't always look the best. But a new Streamlit component has just come out called Link Analysis. It can be easily pip installed. It has a lot of customizational features in it. And most importantly, it lets you build a really good looking network analysis app in Streamlit very quickly. In about four or five lines of code, you can have a very polished looking application. And with another 10 or so, you can give the users a lot of ability to filter out network graphs. Now, one limitation of this library that I'm gonna get into later in this video is that it struggles with larger network graphs. Now, this is not a fault of this component by any stretch of the imagination. This is inherently a problem with most network visualizations because as you get larger, the math behind it gets much more complex and it becomes more and more difficult to render, especially on the user side. Now, there's a lot of other things out there like Graphy that'll get around this issue by loading up the data as necessary, but we're not gonna talk about in this video. Now, why do I like this so much? Well, there's a couple reasons. The first one is, is that it's easy to use. The second one is, is that it has a lot of customization. And the third one, and this is the most important, those customizations mean that you have a lot of interactivity in the application. This is where a lot of other Streamlit components, especially PyViz, in my opinion, have really struggled over the past few years. This allows you to do a lot of things in Streamlit now with network analysis that weren't possible even just a month ago. But before we do, I do all this content for free on YouTube, so if you get a lot out of this channel, please do consider consider supporting it via Patreon or YouTube membership, both of which are linked down below, or just buy me a coffee, also which is linked down below. Okay, now that we're in VS Code, let's go ahead and take a look at what we're seeing here. Now, the first thing that you're gonna notice in this repository is a requirements file, and you'll notice that we only have two requirements. We just need to install Streamlit and ST dash link dash analysis. And so you can go ahead and pip install both of these right now, but I already have both of them installed in this environment, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip this step. Now, if we want to start building our application, we can use the app that I've already got designed for us right here. But before we get into the application, I want to take a few minutes and talk about our data. Because at the end of the day, the data is what's going to make the most sense to start with first because that's the, the basis for all of our network analysis. So your data for ST-Link analysis is going to be structured in this way. A dictionary that has two keys, one of nodes and one of edges. Now, each node or edge is going to be an index in the corresponding respective lists. These are gonna have a key of data, which is going to point to a dictionary. Now inside this dictionary, you're gonna have a unique ID number. It's very important here that each of these is unique. Next, you're going to have your label. This is going to correspond to the node label. And then finally, you can have some extra attributes for each node. As far as I know, there's not a limit here, but ones that make sense for something like person or company is going to be something like name. So in this case, Bill Gates and Microsoft. Now in our edges, we're gonna have a very similar structure. Again, we're gonna have a unique ID number. And again, we're gonna have our label. But the edges, like if you're familiar with most network analysis, is gonna have two necessary features, one being source and the other being target. In network analysis, it's very important to always understand where a relationship is going. So the source is the starting location and the target is the ending location. If you're using a force directed graph, which I have a whole video on on this channel talking about that, you'll understand that this is very important for certain kinds of network visualizations. So that's gonna be what we have right here. This is what our data looks like. So let's go ahead and jump into our application and break down what's happening. So the first thing we're gonna look at are our imports. Now you'll notice that we are importing Streamlit just like we normally would for a Streamlit application. But this is where things get a little different. We're gonna be importing from ST link analysis. So the ST link analysis package, we're gonna import ST link analysis. This is going to be what visualizes our network graph. And we're also gonna be importing two things here, node style and edge style. This is gonna be the way in which we structure the, the way in which the edges and nodes appear. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. Finally, and this is optional, I've imported this right here from stlink analysis components.icons supported icons. And I got this grayed out right now. 
We'll look at this in the application in just a second, but it's a great way to see what icons are available to you. And I'll show you where the icons become very important. Now, for this app, and this is how it is on the standard one that you see in the ST-Link Analysis repository, we're gonna set the page config to wide. This is very important because it gives us the most real estate possible within our application, but this is again, entirely optional. Next, we're gonna load up our data. Inside this repository, I have the data directory right here, subdirectory right here, and we're gonna be working with network.json, which is this data file that we see on the right-hand side. I've also got a couple other data files prepared for you, one called sudo and one called sudo-1000. We'll see both of these in just a minute. We start to stress test the application. So once we have our data loaded up, which is gonna be called elements, this is the Pythonic way to do it, we're gonna then specify how the layout analysis should interpret each of the different pieces, respectively the nodes and the edges. And so for each node type, you want to have a, a specific set of attributes. Uh, the one thing we're gonna see here in the first position is going to be the uh, essentially the label. So essentially when node style sees this first thing here called company, it's gonna know that it needs to format company in a very specific way. The next thing, and this is very important, is gonna be the color. This is gonna be your hash color code that's going to give the, the node its unique color scheme. And then finally, we're going to have the things that we want to populate. And then also we're going to have the actual, or sorry, the caption that we want to see appear. And then finally, we're going to have the icon that we want to be associated with that specific edge. And we'll break this down a little bit as we dive in and see the effects of these in just a minute when we dive into our application. Next, we're gonna have our edge styles. Now again, this is going to have a couple different things. So edge styles is gonna look for the label. So this is going to correspond to our data label over here. And then it's going to have a couple features here that we're using. Right now we're using labeled is set to true. So our edges are going to be labeled. We can easily set this to false and directed. Again, this is going to define if it's a force directed graph or not. So to show the actual direction from source to target. But likewise, we can set this to false. And so we've got these all set to true for every single label. And then finally, we're gonna have our general layout. Now, I'm not, I'm not gonna to dive too much into what's going on here. Maybe I'll make another video and go into layout in a bit more depth. And for those of you who have been around on this channel for a long time, you know that I have about 20 or 30 videos on network analysis, and I have got 20 or 30 videos on Streamlit. So I can do a series on ST-Link analysis probably and get a couple different videos to dive into all these features. So let me know if you wanna know more about what's going on in each of these different areas. But let's dive into this final line here, ST-Link Analysis. Now this is gonna take in our data right here, and then finally it's gonna pass in a couple keyword arguments, specifically the node styles, the edge styles, the layout, et cetera. And this is gonna be what essentially populates the app. So now that we've seen kind of these features, let's go ahead and see what this application looks like. I've named it streamlit underscore app. So let's go ahead and run this, streamlit uh, run streamlit underscore app dot pi and we've now got it loaded up. So this is what our network graph looks like. And as you can tell, it was very smooth, it loaded up very easily. It also looks very visually appealing. And we see our force direction appearing right here. Why do I love ST-Link analysis so much? It's because of this, the interactivity. I can immediately have the different attributes easily visible over here on the left-hand side. Likewise, I can do this for the companies and see them as well. And I can also do this for the edges. So let's take a look at some of those direction and different features that we had to see what effect they have on our actual application. So let's set direction to false for two of these, and we'll set label to false for these as well. And let's go ahead and refresh our app, and we'll see immediately the effects. Notice that we have for the CEO two things. We still have our label and we still have our direction being shown. I know this because I can see that it is from source and I have this little arrow indicating to target. So we see for the other things such as founder and employee, we do not see either of these features anymore. So this is how the Booleans for labeled and directed affect the output of our visualization. Likewise, we can change the color here. I have no idea what color this is going to become. I'm not good at doing uh, color schemes. As, as you can tell, it didn't have much of an effect, but you can adjust the colors. One of the things that I've noticed with ST-Link analysis is sometimes you need to reboot the app to see the changes really take effect. This has happened a couple times as I've experimented with it. But overall, you're able to see these quick effects. 
Now, what if I wanted to visualize something else? Maybe I don't want to see the caption down here be Apple. Instead, I want to see the label for that company. So one of the things that I can do is I can change specifically what's visualized. So I can change this to label and we can refresh and we'll see that I've got the nodes not appearing with a caption corresponding to what the name is, but rather what its label is. So this is one of the things that makes it again, very customizable and easy to use and easy to get up and running very quickly. But what about icons? Well, that's why I've got this grayed out for us. Let's go ahead and rerun. This is a list of all the custom icons that come with ST-Link analysis, but you can also pass in a URL here that corresponds to a specific SVG file. Let's go ahead and change businesses or companies to cloud. So I can swap out the name business for cloud right here in this fourth index, uh, fourth position, rerun, and all my companies now have a cloud uh, icon for them. This is again, an extra layer of customization. But what's really cool about this is that it handles a lot of data pretty well, but starts to cap out after about 300 nodes or so. To stress test it, let's go ahead and take a look at some other data I've got prepared for us. So I'm going to once again, comment this out, and I'm going to load up a pseudo data set. Now this has 300 nodes. And again, this is something I mentioned a second ago. Sometimes you do have to refresh the app to get it to load correctly when you're switching out data, but you'll be able to see that we've got 300 nodes rendered pretty quickly. And again, I've got the exact same kind of data. This is pseudo generated. There's a function that you're a Python script that you can use in the SRC folder to actually generate some data on your own. But this is 300 nodes and about 200 or so edges, I believe. And we can see the data laid out just fine for us. One of the things I noticed though, is when I started getting around 1000 nodes, things started to get much longer to actually load up correctly for me. And it's still loading up the other one. So one of the things that you, again, you'll have to sometimes do is refresh and restart the app from scratch, especially when you're swapping out new data. But one of the things that I did notice as I got to 10,000 is that the data just didn't load at all. So what do you do in these scenarios if you're working with large amounts of data? Well, here's a possible answer. And again, I'll do a video on this to show you. This is the ST-Link Analysis demo application. You'll notice that they have a lot of extra features that allow for extra interactivity, meaning I can swap out the captions easily right here. And this is where I see the interactivity of Streamlit really playing in with the interactivity of ST-Link analysis. You could filter the app or the network visualization based on a user input of specific nodes and specific edges, and therefore take relatively large network graphs and allow for the user to visualize much more specific areas that they want to analyze. All in all, I find ST-Link analysis to be the best way to do network analysis in Streamlit right now. I don't see anything else out there that really comes close to it, both with customization, interactivity, and honestly, just beauty. It looks really nice. It's very visually appealing. Um, and I don't have an aesthetic eye, and even I recognize that this is quite nice. But that's just one person's opinion. I'm curious what you all think. Let me know in the comments down below if you like ST-Link analysis and let me know if you want me to do more videos on it. I'd be more than happy to. I think there's a lot to unpack here. I've only started to scratch the surface of it. So if you wanna start looking more at it on your own, please do visit this repository and start to dive in.